Part 10a. This portion of teaching is going to be a little bit more complicated than the rest. You may need to watch this several times. I do not expect you to fully understand it, but please bear with me. Again, I am doing my best to provoke you to the study of the Hebrew and the Aramaic. I promise that you will never have spiritual hunger and thirst again in this lifetime if you do choose to study and meditate on them. I would like to finish up with the word abad before we move on, but I'm seeing that I'm going to have to take another sidestep here. We understand that the word abad and what it means to not go through the door of revelation, that you will end up wandering away from the Father, losing yourself, will perish and destroy. This is the root of that word. But I wanted to mention that it is the creator or source's heart that none would perish, abad, but all would come to him. Second Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but as long suffering towards us, towards you, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is where we take the sidestep. We need to deal with the word repentance. A simple definition of, in English would be one, to feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing, or two, to view or think of an action or omission with deep regret and remorse. This word in English only deals with the emotional aspect of what is really trying to be conveyed in the original scriptures and is not at all the fullness of that meaning. It is only the first step, which is recognition that something needs to be restored. Does saying sorry with remorse make things better? Well, in some cases, but it is not really what the true essence of the Hebrew Aramaic word conveys. How about a situation like this? If someone wrecked your car, now you can't drive it. Does sorry work in this situation? Not really. The Hebrew concept of repentance is action-based restoring that which has been damaged as if it never happened. This can be with property or with relationships. What are you going to do to restore it as if it never happened? Let's take a look at the word from the New Testament. I will be showing it to you in the Hebrew font instead of the Aramaic to keep things consistent. Hebrew and Aramaic letters are interchangeable. Letter for letter, the font is the only thing that differs. One is formal and the other is informal, but they are attached to one another. A side note here, Hebrew is from the perspective of mother's teaching and Aramaic is the perspective of the father's teaching. Jesus, Yeshua, Isa, fulfilled mother's teaching in that he became it. The language had to change because of it. After becoming mother, through the door of Jesus, Shema, here and do, you then have the ability to see the Father's language, Aramaic, which is then becoming to being the strong leaders. This is what the word looks like in Aramaic. But again, for consistency at this point, we will be looking at the Hebrew font. This is the word le teyabutha, and it means repentance. Repentance is an act of doing, not saying. Shema, hear and do. Since Hebrew and Aramaic are verb-oriented in derived languages, that means that there needs to be action taken when we have done something that we feel remorse about. Leteobutha. Let's break it down. The root of this is a tov bet. This is speaking of those who are marked with the sign of the covenant 
that have spiritually built their house and temple, as we are the temple, you can refer to 1 Corinthians 6.19 on that as one example. This is the essence of the word at the heart of Father, Source. The first movement, we have an added Vav. Now we have meekness within. This word pronounced Tav means to turn back, change the mind, repent, answer, reply, and give. So when we look at all of this, taking the Tav Bet with the Tav Vav Bet, now we have it read, those who are marked with the sign of the covenant that have spiritually built their house and temple have meekness within their heart. They are those who have turned back as they've changed their mind through repentance. They've replied with and answered and they give. Now we're going to take a look at the second movement from the root. Now we have moved to the word Teabutha. What you see here is that we now have a Vav that has been moved from the root to the suffix. We have an added Yod in the root, and on the suffix side we also have a Tav and Aleph. This means those who have been marked with the sign of the covenant have spiritually built their temple and house. After achieving meekness within their root, their heart, they have also been empowered internally, meaning they've been given power, means, and direction within at a later time of this writing, which is now. After possessing meekness, having become the Father's teaching, they will be marked with his covenant and are sealed as the thousandfold family, which are those who have tamed the beast, yoked, taught, and now teach that you should associate with. The third movement has an added lament in the prefix. The Lamed is the bearer of light, one who is a teacher of the mother and father's teachings, who will goad and urge you on, a door that brings the revelation of the covenant that will deliver you. I will explain this to you using some scriptures to back it up. I know that some of you listening to this are already feeling some concern because you have associated light bearer with Lucifer. But I will tell you that Jesus, Yeshua, Isa, is also a light bearer. And so can we. Greater things we will do. John 14 verses 12 through 14 reads, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Again, italicized words that do not refer to other scriptures have been added for grammatical purposes only. Without this word, this reads, greater than these he will do. One day I will teach this verse through the lenses of the Father's covenant. If I were to do that now, it would definitely be the cart before the horse. Patience, again, is the key. Patience is our choice. I used to feel like the crying kid when things took longer than I thought they should, like studying Hebrew and Aramaic. But it is now more like I'm the contemplative kid because learning and patience go hand in hand. It really is about the journey that should be celebrated. Here are other scriptures about being a bearer of light. John 8 verse 12. 
Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, Again, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John 12:36. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of the light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Matthew 5.14 You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Make of yourself a light, said the Buddha upon his death. Like Jesus, Isa Yeshua, he knew that he was light and people were drawn to him. And they both knew, I think, that that was beside the point. They knew it was easier to idolize teachers than to actually listen to what they said and live accordingly. I imagine both of them saying different versions of, Don't you get it? It's not about me. You. You are the light of the world. The light of the world was a common expression in Jewish tradition at that time. Rabbis taught that God was the light of the world, or that the Torah, or that the tribes of Israel those empowered to prevail as the strong leaders, were the light of the world. So saying, you are the light of the world to ordinary people, most of whom were poor and struggling, was something radically different. It would have startled most people. It would have enraged the priest's blasphemy, but it would have also given people hope. I'm not sharing this with you by bringing Buddha into this to cause some alarm. I am simply trying to convey that the teachers of a way of living in life with health, in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control are teachers of light. Positive polarity as opposed to a negative one. Or saying in another way, service to others over service to self. This is the purpose of Mother's Template of Teaching, to become light. Let's take a break. We will do Part B after you've had some time to digest the previous slides. We will be discussing some words that have a Lamed, a teacher of the light, added to them and giving you some interpretation that will set us up for the rest of the lesson. Shalom, shalom.